Hi everybody, Julie Ebersol for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be creating a watercolor look with Copic markers. And the first thing I wanted to do is to grab all the images from a newly released set called So Matcha. And it's all going to fit onto a quarter sheet of Nina Solar White 80 pound that I've loaded into the Misty. I'm just getting the placement there. And then I'm going to remove that cardstock and prep it with some anti-static uh, powder in a, that little pouch. I should have done that beforehand, but I wasn't thinking of it at the time. So I'm doing it now because I'm going to be embossing. So I'm grabbing my VersaFine Claire in the deep rich black nocturne color. I'm going to ink up all the images and stamp them all at one time. Now I I needed to re-ink the hair on these girls because I didn't get quite as saturated or good a coverage as I wanted, which is no problem because I'm using the Misty so I don't have to move anything. I just need to re-ink the stamps and re-impress those images onto that piece of cardstock. Now I'm gonna grab some detail embossing powder. This is by Wow and I love their fine detail clear embossing powder and it looks awesome over black pigment ink. This is the way I usually like to emboss my images if I'm going to uh, use black but you can also use the Brutus Monroe black embossing powder, which also gives a really nice finish. Now, this is what it looks like when the embossing powder is sitting on top of the inked images. And I wanted just to just give you an example of what that looks like, because a lot of times people don't recognize the difference. And then when you start to emboss, preheat your heat gun for about 30 seconds. And I'm holding my heat gun at an angle here. I'm not going straight down at it. And this gives me a lot better visibility so that I can see from the side if I'm getting everything. And I'm just gonna go over all the images carefully. And you don't wanna overheat it till it fuses and burns into the paper. You just wanna make sure you're holding the heat gun there long enough for that powder to melt and turn nice and shiny and then you need to back off. And here I wanted to show you I did miss a spot. So always tilt your project in the light so you can make sure that if you missed anything you can go back and hit it again with the heat gun. So now I'm happy I got everything nicely melted and embossed and I can start coloring. Normally, uh, if you're using a metallic or other colors of embossing powder, you're going to have a hard time using Copic markers. But because I embossed with clear, it's not going to be problematic. I don't know why that is, but there's something about the chemical reaction between alcohol markers and embossing powder. And if you're going to emboss your images, you're going to get the best results using clear embossing powder over a colored pigment ink. Now, I'm using a color called Pale Chiffon to do the skin tone on each of these gals. And then I'm going to come back in with the blush color to give them some rosy cheeks. And then once I'm done with all of that, I'll come back in with the pale chiffon and blend their cheeks out a little bit so they're not quite so harsh as far as that uh, cheek tone color. So now once I've got that done, I'm going to start giving uh, these images that watercolor effect that I talked about. And one reason why I embossed is I seem to get better results doing this if I emboss my images rather than if I just use a plain flat black ink. First, I'm going to be coloring very quickly and I'm just laying down the palest color first and I'm not being very careful. I'm just kind of tapping and swiping and flicking the marker tip and I'm not even trying to get complete coverage. And I'm going to do the same thing with a medium tone marker. I'm going to come right in there and just add little taps and a couple of flicks and strokes here and there. I'm going to get closer to where I want some shading. I may intensify those strokes or lay down a little bit more color, but basically being imperfect with these strokes and flicking the marker is going to give me a simulated watercolor effect. So now I'm coming in with my darkest color here and I'm just applying some strokes. Um, again, I am not being very careful. I'm being pretty haphazard and sloppy about it. But the great thing about the embossing lines is I feel much more confident in this method and it just gives me the freedom to move a lot faster. Whereas when I use a flat black ink, I always feel like I have to be really careful so that I'm not going outside the image lines. And these emboss lines are kind of keeping me contained there. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to keep adding darker color and mid-tone color and then come back in with the lightest color to blend those areas out a little bit so they don't have quite a harsh uh, gradation or transition between the colors and look more watercolory. And sorry, that's not a bug there on the left. That was my hair. I got my hair up in a bun today. So anyway, I'm going to continue on using other colors. I'm going to do her sash here, and I'm using a soft, pale uh 
pink uh, blush color, and then I'm going to come in with a deeper, like a prawn color, a shrimp color, shrimp pink, those colors. I'll have them all listed down below in the description so that you'll know exactly what colors I was working with. But I wanted to show you a close up here. And now I'm just going to go to town and let you watch me uh, do the same thing over and over again until I'm finished with these images. <laughs> to mention that anytime I got kind of overzealous and went outside the image lines or over the embossing lines out to the outer edges, I just took the clear blender pen and cleaned it all up by just sweeping it back towards the image lines. Now to finish off this card, I'm going to stamp a background with the bamboo image from the So Matcha set and set that aside. And then I'm going to stamp a couple more times onto another piece of this juicy pear color, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to take my background that I created and mount that to a base card of 80 pound Nina Solar White. I've got a little border there so I did trim off the edges and then I've got all my images that I ran over to my die cutting machine and got everything die cut out and I'm going to start finishing up the layout and I have already put foam mounting tape onto the back of each of these images so basically this is the layout that I'm going to go with. Once I have everything mounted in place I realized you know there really wasn't a great spot for a sentiment so I'm going to put it on the inside and I'm going to take that little uh, sentiment you know so lucky to call you friend and ink that up with VersaFine Nocturne Claire ink again and then add some of those cherry blossoms as an accent. So I don't normally stamp anything on the inside of my cards, but uh, sometimes I do. And here's the finished effect that I wanted you to see. It's really fun and easy if you emboss the images to get this watercolor effect with alcohol markers. We have more still shots and a detailed list of the products that were featured over at the classroom blog. I also have all the products and supplies that were used listed down below here in the video description box. If you enjoyed this video, please show us some love, like it, and give us a thumbs up. And you can see more of our papercraft videos by clicking on the photos below and by subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching.